What's happening, guys? Today, I have a very special video for you. I got somebody on the channel who worked in retail uh, at Victoria's Secret specifically, and she was able to transition over into digital marketing in about three months or so. So really impressive how fast she was able to transition over. I think you're going to get a lot out of this one. You're really going to enjoy it. So gently tap that like button and let's jump right into it. All right, Ariel, thank you so much for coming on the channel. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. Awesome. So let's go ahead and kind of talk about your uh, background just a little bit, like your professional background, maybe just kind of introduce yourself. You can share whatever you're comfortable with and uh, then maybe just talk about how you discovered digital marketing. Yeah, sure. I started working at Victoria's Secret a while ago, um, it was actually one of my first jobs. It was something that I was doing in a transition of like having a first job while I'm in college. I have an associate's degree, um, a liberal arts associate's degree, not really much good for anything because um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, but basically I was working to kind of kill the time until I figured out what I wanted to do. I wound up staying um, there because I got promoted you know, at the time it was really good for me. I was a sales girl on the floor. Um, and basically that's really important to this because in Victoria's Secret, we have different sections of the store. So there's cash wrap, which is basically like register and back stock. Um, we used to have beauty girls, which were the people that just sold like the perfume. And when we did have makeup, they were them. If your local Victoria's Secret store has a pink, there were Victoria's Secret girls and there were pink girls. So I was a Victoria's Secret girl. I was the person that as soon as you came in the store, I was that annoying person that was like, hey, how can I help you? What are you looking for today? <laughs> it was a very demanding job because unlike most retailers where you kind of just walk in, walk out with whatever you want, if you need help, we'll be like, yeah, sure. We had to sell. We had to go after the customer, be very personable and get you to buy what we needed you to buy. So in that sense, it was very demanding, but um, I liked it because it got me to come out of my shell. So it wasn't that bad um, at first. <laughs> and um, then I got promoted, like I said, as a bra specialist, which yes, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Basically, I am supposed to be the most knowledgeable on how to fit somebody what the best bra is for somebody. Um, and I yes, I got trained on that. It was long hours of training. And it's kind of like a low level supervisor for the sales girls. And I would transition from Victoria's Secret to Pink multiple times because that's different types of selling. But, you know, um, so I was there for, I'm going to say like five years. And that whole time, it was good and it was bad because I was getting a lot of experience. It was um, bad though, because I didn't have a life. Basically I had two days off a week, um, but in retail really depends on what day you get. And I did have a Saturday, I, have, I had Saturdays off, but that Saturday was either me thinking, am I going to rest after being exhausted from closing from the night before at 2 a.m.? I'm going to going to see my family? Am I going to see my friends? Like it was, it was really, really bad. And I was like at a breaking point where I couldn't do it. I was physically exhausted. I didn't have any more hobbies that I kept up with because I had no time. And I was moving away from my friends because I never saw them. Everyone had basically like a regular nine to five off on the weekends kind of thing and that's not true for everybody but for my life that was that was true of everybody and I didn't see anybody I remember it got to the point where I I'm not a crier at work <laughs> but I remember I started crying at work one day because I couldn't do it anymore it was it was that bad and um, I decided that I have to, I have to find something else. Like I have to do something for myself. Otherwise it's just going to lead me down a path of like real misery. But I think what's interesting is that a lot of people don't leave their jobs they're at, even though they're miserable at them is because they're afraid. And I feel like that's what I had to face is that I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to do anything else. Like I didn't go back to college because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was like, what, what am I going to do then? Go 
to another retail place, could do this, do that. Like these are all jobs that I don't want in the end. You know, it's just, you're just switching spots. You're not changing your life. Mm -hmm. So I always liked marketing in a general sense. Like I loved the idea of marketing advertising is very into that stuff, but I really actually never thought of pursuing it as a career. I was like, well, you got to go back to school for that. Mm -hmm. And I at first was wrangling with the thought, okay, I guess I'm going to have to go back to school. How am I going to pay for school? Cause I'm going to have to take a loan out. Like, you know, my, I have two working parents. They can't afford to send me to school fully. Um, with the salary that I was making, I certainly couldn't do it. And I had friends who had gone to four-year colleges and they were still paying off their loans and have a lot of debt. And I didn't want to be in that situation until I was like, absolutely sure this is what I wanted to do. So I started researching um, into marketing and I took like tiny little courses that they sell online, like for $20 from like Udemy or Coursera. And I was, you know, just doing that, but it wasn't leading to anything tangible. I'm like, okay, got some knowledge, but like, where is this going? And basically the more and more I looked, Google knows what you're looking for. I got some (laughs) suggestions um, on YouTube. And it was for Seth Jarrett's digital marketing course. And the first thing I watched was an interview um, that he had with somebody else who joined his course. I didn't believe it at first. I'm going to tell you, I was not a believer. I was like, Mm -hmm. this is not real. This guy did not pay this much money for this course. And now he has like a whole job making six figures in a year. I was like, this is total BS. A lot of people think that a lot of people think that when they watch these videos, I can't blame them. But I mean, when you see like dozens and dozens of interviews, what do you you think they're all paid actors? Come on now. (laughs) Exactly. That's the thing is that there were so many and I kept watching them. And then I would look on their LinkedIn, the actual people in the interviews. And I was like, okay, they're being serious. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I did do was I got his free mini course, which was like the introduction to his course. It took me, I think, like two weeks to make a decision. I was actually going to Miami to meet up with some friends for like a break. And I was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to come back with a decision. And um, he charged about like $800 for his course, I think, which in the grand scheme of things, $800, Forty thousand dollars for one year marketing at a school. I don't even know if I want to go to. So, oh yeah, it was it is a lot of money, but I feel like I had to invest, otherwise I was going to go nowhere. So, I sent him a message, um, like an email, and I said, "Hey, like, so is this like a career? Like, is it really marketing? Like, is it creative? Cause I'm a very creative person. And, you know, like, is this something that somebody like me would like to do? And he answered me back right away. And he's like, I think SEO would be perfect for you. He's like, but I don't know. You got to give it a shot. So I did. And it took me one month to finish the whole course. Um, that is not true of everybody. Everyone has to go at their own pace. I personally was just I was like on a mission to like change my life, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really rationed my time after work. If I could do it after work or before work, I would go to my local Barnes and Noble and I would study for like two hours a day, every day, Monday to Friday. And that was my life for a month. And I was like, I going to be done by the beginning of May because I started at the beginning of April and I did. It was hard because I feel like there's some points where you get caught up in the tricky parts and you're like, I can't do this. It's mm-hmm. too hard. And I was like, no, like this is, these are the times that you push through it. So I did. And um, I think about a week after I finished the course and I did my resume the way Seth instructed, um, I started sending out applications. And within the first week, I started getting interview responses, which was great. Um, that as most people know, you really hope and pray that like the first one is going to be the one that just gets you. You're going to be like the exception. You're going to get that job right away. Um, it was not the case. Um, I went through a lot of interviews. Um, 
and sometimes to the point where I, they would be piled on top of each other in like one day and I would be so eager to take these interviews that I would literally like stick them in between lunch hours and then like kind of make them through like oh I can do this right before I leave for work or right after like it's a little crazy I think I went a little overboard <laughs> but I was so eager to just get in there and um I remember the job that I'm currently at now was actually the job that I thought I had no shot at getting. Like I said, this is definitely not the case for everybody, but it was for me. They were offering way above what was, I guess, kind of normal Mm -hmm. um, for an entry-level SEO position. And I just applied because it said entry-level. I said, I'm definitely not going to get this, but like, I, I just did it anyway. And I got a response back that was basically like, hey, um, we saw you applied, we're interested, but um, just so you know, this is a very client heavy facing job. Are you comfortable with that? I was like, of course I am, but I was like, I'm not going to get the job anyway, but yeah, sure, whatever. Let's do an interview. I did the interview and I got invited back for a second interview. They told me all about the job and I thought it was great. I loved the people there. Literally the next day I got my first um, acceptance letter and I almost started crying because I was like, no way. Like they are crazy. They are not looking for me. Like, you know, what I actually did do was I responded back and I said, hey, you know, um, can I think about it? (laughs) And I know that sounds really crazy, but I was like, I didn't want to say yes right away. I wanted to make sure that this was the job for me because I remember someone Seth's course said, just because you get a first response back doesn't mean it has to be that job that you want, you know, like somebody from the team who's my current boss now, who's amazing, reached out to me, said, hey, do you want to do a Zoom call? We can talk it out, see if you have any questions that might make you help make a decision. I said, that would be great. So I discussed the role with him. I am entry level and I want to make sure that this position is for that. And um, basically he was like, no, we know exactly where you're at. Um, And he was very honest with me. He said, we had people that were um, way more experienced than you that did apply for this job. But um, they did tell me that they picked me because they liked my personality and that Mm -hmm. I was a good culture fit for the company. I was like, well, that's great. And I accepted right then and there. And now I'm in my position. I've been here for three months. Thank you. It's, It's great. It's really great. And I definitely see why they hired me because to work at this job specifically, you have to be very friendly with your clients, very personable. Mm. And they are very big on company culture here. We all work from home. We can't be together. And it's hard to stay connected, you know. And for me, I feel like company culture is such a big thing because if I can't feel connected, I don't know why I would want to work there. For me, that's motivating other than, you know, the paycheck. But Mm -hmm. um, that's what really got me. And I'm very, very happy where I am now. And I've feel really blessed that like I was able to come here. Okay. So at your current job right now, I know you said you know, like work-life balance is the most important thing and that's awesome. That's great that you, you know, have your priorities straight. Um, mm-hmm. Would you say like digital marketing in general, if you want to have really good work-life balance, it's a good path to go down? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like it's like, you know, some people say like, it depends on like the, the exact job you're going into in digital marketing. They say like, a job like mine that's very client facing, it can be more restrictive. My company told me, as long as I'm scheduling things around my clients, I'm just doing what I got to do. I have all the flexibility in the world. And realistically, a lot of companies don't schedule meetings outside three o'clock. So (laughs) I I can be out by three if I want, you know, or Mm -hmm. if I have something to go do, I'll go do it. I feel like it is a really flexible job. And if that is something that you value, um, I would just say that always be aware that because you are working from home and it is flexible, you have to keep yourself in line. So let's go ahead and uh, whatever you're comfortable sharing. I know everyone probably, you know, this is the question everyone wants to know. 
but uh, entry level job in digital marketing, what would you expect to be paid? Or if, if you're comfortable, you can tell me kind of what the offer they gave you was. Yes. Yeah, so what from my understanding from Seth and all his students and from what I saw in the applications, what they were initially offering, generally between 35 to 45,000 to start. That was pretty mm-hmm. much the medium. I was offered 60,000 to start. Gotcha. Um, I remember I asked Seth, I was like, is this normal? And he's like, it's a bit higher than usual, but um, it's not like wildly crazy. Um, But I think it was, like I said, they were looking for an already experienced candidate. And what they got with me was, you know, I, I told them I have to be treated as an entry level person. I need the training. I need the time um, to grow. And I feel like what they did with me was they just invested in me to basically kind of make me like their creature essentially. So that way I can grow with the company, really absorb everything and then just be the best that I could be. Um, but I feel like, you know, that's, those are personal moves that companies make. So another thing I quickly wanted to ask you about is, um, just personality wise, uh, who, like what type of people tend to do best in digital marketing? And maybe is there like certain personalities that do better in the different lanes in digital marketing? So for instance, like creative people, analytical, introverts, extroverts, et cetera. It's definitely a mix. And it's definitely something that you have to kind of discover on your own, especially if you're joining a company. Like I said, for me, Um, my job, it's very client facing. I have to be comfortable with talking to people, um, understand that there can be like confrontations and stuff like that. It hasn't happened to me yet, but like, I have to learn how to deal with that in a very personable way for an introvert. I don't think that's something that they would want to deal with. Not a lot of SEO jobs require this to be very client facing. There's people that are on the technical side. They don't have to talk to anybody, but their bosses or whatever and they just go about mm-hmm. their day and that's great um ppc same thing behind the scenes they go about their day but i know people in ppc in my job they have to be okay with being client facing too so they kind of have to like bring that out it's definitely for all different lanes of people and i think that's why this career is so great because it mixes all those kinds of people i know a bunch of people in my company that are very opposite me very introverted and they do fantastic. They're amazing people. Um, and I feel like introverted people, when they're around people that they like, they come out of their shell more. And I feel like it challenges you to be more than you expected. Like for me, I'm a very creative person. Analytical, mm, like <laughs> people are like, you don't like analytical things and yet you're working with Google Analytics every day. And I'm like, well, that's what came with the job. And I challenge myself every day to be that person to be that person's like yes I'm doing it I'm doing it better every day may not know it as fast or as well as the guy next to me but I'm going to do the best that I can do and come out of my shell and just do it actually I I did want to mention uh Seth does have a free master class so if you're kind of a little bit confused about the different types of digital marketing like SEO pay-per-click search engine marketing all this sort of thing um, all of that will be explained in Seth's masterclass. So I highly recommend checking that out. I'll put it down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. One last thing I wanted to ask you, and that is if somebody's kind of on the fence about buying Seth's course, investing in Seth's course uh, and going through it, uh, what would you say to that person? I would say, do your research because I feel like it's a it's a personal choice. And for me, I really had to do my research. Like I watched so many interviews. I read so many outside resources and I had to really think about like, is this going to be valuable to me? Is it going to give me the kind of life that I want? And sometimes it's just a leap of faith, but definitely just do your research. And if you're really feeling like you want to do it, I say, do it. I know you do have to drop some money, but it's definitely worth it as long as you stick with it. He has a community of people on Facebook that talk all the time, asking so many questions, supporting each other, because it can, like I said, it can be very difficult, especially in the job process where 
um, the job finding process where you're sending out all these applications and you're getting rejections. Like I got so many rejections and there was a point where I was like, you know what? I don't think I can do this. I think I'm doing something wrong. And I remember I went in the Facebook chat and I was like, you know, am I doing something wrong? And everyone was like, no, this is the process. Watch, give it some time. You'll find something. And I did. And I feel like that that's really what motivates people is other people that are in the same boat supporting each other. So I feel like with that, you'll never be alone in this journey. Get out there and like connect. And I definitely just think it's totally worth it. Like everyone that has mm-hmm. taken this and seen it through have all been incredibly successful. You yeah. Can't beat that. Yeah, absolutely. Some people have even told me they've just gotten jobs from the networking through the Facebook group, essentially, right? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, that's how I powerful mean, yeah. that Facebook group is. Yeah, it's it's like literally thousands of people who are, you know, interested in digital marketing or, or already in digital marketing. So, yeah, it can be super, super useful. Well, mm-hmm. hey, thank you so much for coming on the channel and sharing your story. I think it's going to inspire a lot of people out there. Um, really cool story. Congrats again on your success as well. Um, yeah. So thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm really happy to share my story and I hope someone out there maybe makes a decision from watching this because it's totally worth it.